Newton's law of gravitation says that any two spherical objects are attracted to each other with a force which is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. Okay, let F be the force between these two spherical masses. F is proportional to the product of the masses, so let one mass be called big M and the other mass little m. So what does this mean? Well, it means that if we double any of these two masses, we will double the force. So, you know, if we um, replace big M with a, for a mass that's twice as big, two times big M, then we double the force. Or if we replace little m with a mass that's twice as big, you know, uh, two times little m, then we also double the force. Or if we multiply big M by 3, we triple the force. Or if we multiply little m by 3, we triple the force, and so on. Now we are given that F is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. So the magnitude of the gravitational force is proportional to 1 over the square of the distance between the centers of the two masses. So that distance is little r. So what does this mean? Okay, so this is the mathematical statement of inverse proportionality. Okay, f is proportional not to r squared, but proportional to 1 over r squared. So it means that if we replace r with, say, 2r, if we double the radius, double the distance between the centers of the two spherical masses, what happens to the force? Um, that should be 2. Okay, so I'm replacing r with... Uh, 2r. I've doubled the distance between the centers of the two masses. Well, what will this work out to? Well, this works out to 1 over 4r squared. So how does 1 over 4r squared compare to 1 over r squared? Well, we can see that the mass has gone down by a factor of 4. I'm sorry, um, the f gravitational force has gone down by a factor of 4, okay? So doubling the distance between the centers of the masses has the effect of... Um, reducing the force by a factor of four. So the force that we get is only a quarter of what it was. And we can imagine, say, replacing little r with 3r. Multiply the distance between the centers by 3. Well, we're going to get a 9 here. So the force now will de go down by a factor of 9. So the force will only be one ninth as strong. So that's what's, what is meant by... Um, the gravitational force being inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two masses. So in general, as the distance goes up, the force will go down in this inverse proportional relation. We can combine these two proportionality relations into a single proportionality relation. So we haven't changed anything. If I double big M, I double the force. If I double little m, I double the force. If I double r, the distance between the centers of the masses, the force goes down by a factor of 4. So everything follows if I just combine these two relations together. I haven't violated anything. If one quantity is proportional to another quantity, it means that the first quantity must be a scalar multiple of the second quantity. It must be just a constant multiple of the second quantity. Now the constant of proportionality here has the value 6.67 by 10 to the minus 11. It's denoted by capital G. The units are Newton meter squared over kilogram squared. That makes sense because all of this quantity must have units of Newtons because it's a force. Okay, so if we just look at the units by themselves, uh, the units of G are Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Uh, the units of mass are kilograms, but this, ha this is so many kilograms, little m is so many kilograms, so we've kilograms times kilograms, that's kilograms squared, and underneath we have a distance squared, that's meters squared. So the meters squared cancel out. Um, the kilograms squared up here cancel out as well, we have kilograms squared underneath the line here, and multiplied by kilograms squared from the two masses, so we end up with units of newtons. Okay, that was just more of an aside. Let's look at some examples. Okay, so the force on each mass is the same. So the force on big M is the same as the force on little m. Let's look at the force on big M. 
it's an attractive force. I mean, uh, big M is attracted towards little m. We could write it like this. It's the vector F, the force on big M due to little m. Okay, following the convention that we saw in previous videos. Um, so really, I could have big force on big M due to little m here. What else is it due to? We're dealing with just a gravitational force on big M due to little m. By Newton's third law, there's an equal and opposite force on little m due to big M. So Newton's third law is implicit in uh, Newton's law of gravitation, actually. These two forces are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So I'm only showing the magnitudes over here. You can see that the magnitudes are the same. Now we have already seen that the acceleration due to gravity of an object at the surface of the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now this result actually comes out of Newton's law of gravitation. So let's consider a mass m, I'll denote it by little m, at the surface of the Earth. Now, um, you know, it might be a certain distance above the surface of the Earth, but that's not going to matter too much as long as this mass is close to the surface of the Earth. As long as the distance of the mass to the surface of the Earth is small compared to, to the distance of this mass to the center of the Earth. Actually, I probably should show M a little bit closer than what I have it here. Now, we know that the magnitude of the gravitational force on little m is given by this form formula here and it's directed towards the center of the Earth. So this is the force on little m due to big M, where big M is the mass of the Earth, or is the distance between the centers of the masses. Okay, so little m is assumed to be a spherical mass. Well, it won't matter because it's so tiny compared to big M. Um, we're getting the distance of the center of big M to the center of little m. Okay, that's our R. And you can see that for objects near the surface of the Earth, that value is essentially just equal to the radius of the Earth. So as long as the object is re reasonably close to the Earth, at least um, the dis this distance is small compared to the radius of the Earth, which is 6.4 by 10 to the 6 meters, about 6.5 million meters, then, um, you know, we, we don't have to worry too much about the value for the acceleration due to gravity of little m. So, um, okay, we have an expression for the force of gravity. We need to just fill in for g and the mass of the Earth. The mass of the Earth is 6 by 10 to the 24 kilograms. Okay, so this blue vector here is the direction of the force on little m. What about the acceleration? Well, by Newton's second law, the acceleration is in the same direction as the resultant force. So we are assuming that this is the only force acting on this mass here. Well, it's certainly the only force that's significant. Um, well, if we leave out electrical forces or magnetic forces, we're, we're going to forget about them. Pretend that this is the only force acting on the on little mass m. So we just apply Newton's second law. This force is the mass of m, which is little m, times the acceleration of it. Okay, and that's what we're after. And that number is called g in this case. Well, I just call it a actually. Um, so how do we get a? Well, if we want to get a, we need to just divide by little m. And you can see that these little m's cancel. So we've applied Newton's law of gravitation and Newton's second law for the resultant force acting on little m. And if you calculate this, you get about 9.8. Okay, and this is given the name g. So as long as we're near the surface of the Earth, our value of g won't change too much from 9.8. Um, you see the, the distance from here to here, from the center of the Earth to the surface of the Earth, is 6.4 by 10 to the 6. So that's a quite a large distance. So, you know, if you add on few hundred meters to the surface is not going to make any difference to the calculation. A few hundred meters compared to six and a half million meters is fairly negligible. 